Do you really want to know what God wants you to do today? Do you want to know Jesus in a personal way? In a personal way. The, do you want a relationship you know, I, I, there's no doubt in my mind that there's mil, multitude millions of people here on this earth that d desires more than anything to know Him. Well, I'm going to tell you how to know Him this morning if you'll listen to this message. Glory to His holy name. Lord, I thank You and I praise You for this Word that You've given me. Guide and direct. Lord, I praise You for the truth in the Word. Lord, use me for your honor and your glory. Holy Spirit, touch my mind. Lord, touch my mouth. Use me for your honor and your glory. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. I'll be taking my scripture this morning from John 1 and the 14th verse. It says, The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. I'm going to ask you a question this morning that that I've been dealing with for a long time, and is that is, do I love, did I know Jesus? And and you know, a lot of people in this world that we live in, a lot of Christian people are saved, born again. I was born again for years, but yet I really didn't know Him. I knew who He was. And I accepted Him through faith as my Lord and Savior. I came to Him, repented of my sins, confessed Him with my mouth, believed in my heart that God has raised Him from the dead, and I was saved. But that's as far as my relationship went with Him. I, I just couldn't grasp the fact that He was a friend the Bible says that he was a, he's a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And I just, I never could understand that aspect of, of what God's Word says. But I came to understand and know that if I would get in His Word, and, and the Word just said that, John 1, 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, now, we can go through and name Scripture after Scripture after Scripture that, that tells us that the Word of God is in Jesus, is Jesus Christ. But I want to uh, concentrate on knowing Him, knowing Him. And knowing Jesus is knowing the Word. And, you know, I struggled for years. I mean, years decades with my with not only my salvation but with my relationship with him because I had a skewed view and I've said this before but I had a skewed view of God I, he was some long hair long it was he was some old man with a long white beard sitting on a throne with a hammer in one hand and a lightning bolt in the other just waiting for me to mess up. And that's not God. That's religion. That is religion in, in, at its best right there. And religion is controlling. Religion sets rules that, you you know, we just can't follow. I've said before that, that God's far easier to please than, than man ever thought about being. And it, it's, it's sad that people are turned away from God because all they have seen in their lifetime is religion. Religion and, and, and harsh things that just, you know, take a hammer in one hand, a lightning bolt in the other, just waiting for you to screw up. And it's sad to say, but that's just religious people a lot of times. And we don't. We need to understand that that's not God. That's not God. This whole podcast is 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 wrapped around Luke fifteen eleven through twenty four, the story of the prodigal son, and and that is what I have the what the Lord has put in my heart for me to strive to do, and that is to show the world. 
that he's not some crazy old senile bipolar old man sitting around watching, waiting for us to mess up so he can beat on us. That's not God. That that is a <laughs> that is a, a mean religion. And and it's sad, but that's just the way it is. That's just religion at its best. God loves us. And I've said it over and over and over, but it bears repeating. God loves us. He loves the abortion doctor as much as he loves the babies they're killing. And we've got to get that through our heads and into our hearts to know that good night, that's how much he loves us. He loves us more than we'll ever understand on this earth. But I guarantee you, If you'll start putting his word, getting to know Jesus, and getting to know Jesus is getting to know his word, and getting to know what his word says about situations in your life, you'll find that a Christian life is not hard to live. When I, I got born again, I got saved at a funeral. And I'll just be honest with you, I was defeated before I ever got out the doors of the church because all I knew about being saved was what I could do in my strength. And I was, I was defeated before I got out the doors. I struggled for for a decade just as hard as I could struggle to do what I I knew to do or what I thought I knew to do, and that was just do my best in my flesh, in myself. And when all the time <laughs> Jesus was saying, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon me on you and learn of me, because I am meek and lowly of heart. God wants us to see that he's not that mean old dictator that religion has made him out to be. And, and man has put him on, in a place that, that, that discredits the whole Bible when it comes to the love of God because people don't see the love of God in religion. All they see is rules and regulations and things that, that can hurt them if they don't do what they are told to do. And that's not him. But there again, I want, I want to ask you, do you know Jesus? Now you say, well, I've been born again. I've been saved, and that's wonderful. And if you hadn't been saved, go to Romans 10 and 9 and read that. That if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the mouth confession is made. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's salvation in a, in a nutshell. But God don't want you standing in the door of salvation and never, never you know, going into his kingdom and seeing what what he wants us all to be doing. And that's to learn of me, as the Bible says, learn of me, for I am meek and lowly of heart. He's not some mean old man. I promise you he's not. He's a loving father that will that will love you and I don't care what position you're in right now he will love you and he will restore you just like the father restored the prodigal son when he came home That's what people don't understand that's what people get all screwed up when it comes to to coming to God they think they've got to clean themselves up and they've got to they they've got to do something on their own to get to where they can you know come and talk to him and 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 be worthy of his love nothing we can do is worthy of his love it's by his grace and mercy that God loves us and he went to a lot of trouble to give us that opportunity he went to a lot of trouble to give us the, the, what we need, what we, oh, we desire deep down in our heart. You know, for years, you know, and, and, and this, is the, this is the world in a nutshell. But for years, 
I chased, I chased that. I tried to satisfy that desire in me with everything under the sun. And when I finally came to the understanding knowledge that to know God's Word is to know Him, to know the Lord in an intimate way. And when I came to that conclusion, there wasn't any substance in this world that, that I could ever consume or study or look at that, that would satisfy me any more than being dead sinner of what God wanted me to do. And being dead sinner of what God wants you to do today is to be dead sinner of His Word. Do you know Jesus? If you want to know Jesus, get to know His Word because Jesus is the Word. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Good night. And that, that's, that's it in the nutshell. He's the way. You'll, if He's the way, you'll not get lost. If He's the truth, you'll never be deceived. And if He is life, you'll never die. Glory to God, that's the truth. That is the truth in a nutshell. Glory to God, that's something to shout about. That's something to get excited about. To know that you know the way, the truth, and the life. And He loves you more than life itself because He came as a man and died on the cross that we might have life and have it more abundantly. You know, the Bible says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And somehow religion's got God in those shoes. That ain't God. He's not out to kill you. He's not out to hurt you, to teach you a lesson. He's not out to kill your kids, your parents, your family in any way to teach you a lesson. That's Satan. And don't let any religious person ever tell you any different. Because the Bible don't teach that God's going to whack you in the head if you don't straighten up. That's religion. God loves you, and He will accept you back into His foe. All you've got to do is turn to Him and repent and come, to, come home like the prodigal son did to the father. The father didn't, didn't open his mouth about the, about the son's mistakes and his sins, but he welcomed him back. Furthermore, he didn't allow read that. Read that scripture. I'm going to read it here. I want you to see what, what the Father really said when it, when it came, uh, came to, to uh, the Son coming home. Because a lot of times, you know, religion wants to, to bring up your past so many times and throw your past up in your, in your face. And that's just carnality. That's just people. That's just people in general. But they want to throw up your past and and throw your your mistakes up into your and your in your face for years for decades i've got people in my life just cannot leave well enough alone when it comes to my past you know what i do i just love them don't say anything to them they'll figure it out one day and that's just it in a nutshell but the 11th chapter of the 15th verse of luke it says, a certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of my goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the young son gathered all together and took his journey into the far country, and there wasted, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in the land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. Now this boy was in a mess. He was in a mess. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger, and I will arise and go to my father, and I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. 
But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto the father, now listen to this. And the son said unto the father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight am no more worthy to be called thy son. And the father shut him down right there. That's all he wanted to hear. That's all he wanted to hear. He said, I've sinned. And, and the father said, but the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again and he was lost and is found and they began to be merry. Glory to God. That is a, a picture of the father this morning. And, and that is a picture of how much he loves you. That young man came home with a speech, and he didn't get to say but one sentence of it. Why? Because the father wasn't looking for retribution for his mistakes. He wasn't looking for a fight, sacrifice for his mistakes. He was looking for repentance. That's it. That's how much God loves us. He's not interested in shaming you. He's not interested in putting you into, into condemnation for what you've done. You live in enough condemnation on your own. I'm going to be honest with you. I lived in condemnation that I brought on myself. The religious people that I knew helped with the matter, but the fact of the matter was I was far more condemned in my own heart than I ever was by any of them. Why? Because I listened to the devil. I listened to what he told me about myself. That I was worthless, useless, never would amount to anything because of the mistakes I had made. And then I come to understand that the Word of God is truth and Satan's a liar and the father of them. And anything that he had told me was nothing but a lie. And if I'd listened to the Lord and believe his word, I could see miracles happen in my life. And glory to God, I have. I have. I, I don't say a lot about my past, but I feel like I... I, I feel impressed this morning to, to tell you, but I had reserved in my heart a decade ago probably that I would die drunk, an alcoholic drunk that had more problems than any man could carry. I had already made up my mind that the, I, that was just my role in life. And that was just where I was going to end up. And God saw fit. He finally got me to understand that it wasn't me. I was believing a lie. I was believing the lies of the devil. And helping in the condemnation part of it. But right here where I'm standing doing this podcast, back up on behind my home, there's a pine ridge, a ridge with all kinds of pines on it. I was up in there roaming around one day, just miserable, sick, miserable, in a, in a place in my life that, that I couldn't see no help for. And I said, Lord... You're going to have to handle this because I can't. I'm sorry. Forgive me. And that's all it took. That is all it took. And five years later, no, it's been longer than that. Almost seven years later. That was 2012. Almost seven years later. Six years and so many, so many months. I stand before you glorifying a risen Savior, not by my goodness, not by my, my strength or my abilities or, or my, you know, accomplishments, but by His grace and His honor and His glory and His mercy because He brought me out of a place that I couldn't 
I couldn't find a way out of. And all it was is I was trying to become, or I was trying to live up to God's standards by my own strength. And that's impossible. When I started uh, uh, believing, reading and believing God's Word, and when I read 2 Corinthians 5 and 21, talking about where He was made to be sin for us, that we might be the righteousness of God in Him. When I realized of what I had become in Jesus Christ, and what I had, had, had accomplished through Him, not through me, but by, by His accomplishments, by me being in Him, I could come boldly to that throne. I'd read that scripture a lot. Come boldly to the throne of grace. I'd been taught to crawl up there and hope He didn't crack you in the head. And that's just a lie of religion. A lot of good people in this world are, are, are blinded by that religious look, outlook on God. That ain't God. That ain't God. Hey, I promise you that ain't God. That's some religious fanatic that wants to control somebody and wants to force them to do something that, that it's, it's impossible for them to do on their own. That's the sad part of it. People don't realize. They carry a load throughout their lifetimes that they don't have to carry. He said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke and learn of me, because I am meek and lowly of heart. Now that script, that, that one scripture right there, is, is testimony to God's goodness. To, to, is testimony that he ain't some crazy old bipolar old man wanting to hurt you. But that's the picture that most people in the world have of God. That he wants to hurt them if they get out of whack. And they don't want no, no part of it. And I don't blame them. Because if I'm going to go into a church house and all they're doing is browbeating me over my shortcomings, look here, I said, I've said i said this before, I don't know if I've ever said it on this podcast, but you've got to be mentally retarded. And I don't like that word, but this is something that people need to understand. You've got to be mentally retarded not to know where you're at in your relationship with God. Now, I'm telling you, mentally impaired to not know what you're doing is right or wrong. That's just it in a nutshell. People aren't stupid. And that's the last thing that, that the, the church, the Christian people of this world need to be doing is pointing out their dadgum, their, their, their everybody's sins around them. They turned into the sin police instead of doing what, what God told them to do, and that's love one another. That people around them might see God's goodness. And be dry. It's the goodness of God that leadeth man to repentance. Not, the, not some pharisaical, you know, way of, of just, just demeaning people down to their nothing and, and expecting them to love God after you have stomped on them that way. Uh-uh. That ain't God. That is not God. I'll be honest with you. When I, when I backslid and got out of, away from organized church, and don't get me wrong, I go to a church now that's, that's full of the Holy Spirit, full of the Word. The Word is taught. I wouldn't, tr I wouldn't trade it for, for any church in this town. But I'm going to be honest with you. When I left in, you know, 18, 20 years ago, when I left the, the organized church that I was attending then, it, that was one of the biggest weights off of my shoulders that I had ever had in my life. It was like, it was freedom to not worry about what they thought. I was so worried about what they thought. And I had forgotten about what God said. And forgotten that I needed Jesus to live that Christian life. 
I knew that. But I didn't know to what extent I was really talking about. I was I had come to a conclusion that I couldn't do it on my own. And I threw my hands up and quit because I thought that was the only way. Instead of looking to the Word and finding out what Jesus said. And finding out that He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. My goodness. And when I finally came, came to myself, a dozen years later, over a decade wasted, just goofing off, living on my own, by God's grace and mercy, I lived. But this is something that I don't want other people to have to do. Because I didn't know how good God was. I didn't know how much He loved me. I didn't know that, that He would forgive me if I just ask. Why? Because I didn't know His Word. I was a preacher. But all I'd ever preached was, was what I'd heard. What I had been taught. And I, I, it's sad to say, but it wasn't much. I mean, salvation's the most important thing in a, in a person's life. I assure you that. Don't get me wrong. And denominational people are, are really good at teaching salvation, but that's where it stops. And it, 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 it was sad that I had such a, a limited outlook on Jesus. Did I know Him as my personal Savior? Yes, I did. There's no doubt. But did I really know Him? No, I didn't. Why? Because I didn't know just how much He cared. I didn't know how much I was loved and valued. I didn't know the, the dominion that I had given, been given here on this earth when God created this earth. And I didn't know the responsibility that that held for every human being that I knew walked here on this earth. We all have a responsibility because we're in control of this, uh, this earth. We're in control of what goes on. Not God. Not God. No fault religion. Now you hear this. No fault religion says, oh, if it ain't God's will, it won't happen. That's crazy. That is crazy. To say, well, if it's God's will, it'll come true. And if it ain't God's will, it won't. I'm going to debunk that in one statement. It is not God's will for 60 million babies to die in abortion clinics across this nation since the early 70s. But yet it has happened. Now, if that's God's will, he's, he ain't who I'm preaching about this morning. That ain't God's will. That is Satan at his finest. Abortion is Satan at his finest. At, but yet, no fault religion will say, well, God's got a reason for it. No, that is not God. That's Satan at his finest. Killing, stealing, and destroying. Stop allowing the Lord to be put into a place that the devil occupies. And that's him. People, God's will is not done. And if, and if God, if God, everything that goes on in this earth is God's will, he's a sorry manager and he needs fired. I promise you, everything that goes on in this earth is not God's will. He's a loving father and he loves us and he cares for us. But it's up to us to walk in that love. It's up to us to, 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 to find out. It's up to us to know Jesus. And to know Jesus is to know His Word. And to know His Word is to know His will. And to know His will is to find out what we're supposed to be doing and do it. 
glory to God, we can all do that. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a, a, a person in a church house and that holds a, a, a position in a church. But you can just look to Him and be used mightily by the Lord today. Do you know Jesus? First of all, be saved, be born again. Romans 10, 9 and 10. That if y'all confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's salvation in a nutshell. And then when you get done with salvation, get saved and born again and filled with the Holy Spirit, you go in and, and you devour that book. And you seek out what God wants you to do in your life. And I promise you, you'll know, you'll know Him. You'll know Jesus when you know His book. Do you want to know Jesus this morning? Do you want to know what He wants for your life? Get in His Word. Devour His Word. Wear a Bible out and go back and get another one. Just seek Him in His Word. If you want His will to be done in your life... Learn His Word, know His Word, seek Him in His Word, and you'll find Him.